Welcome, everybody. Good afternoon. Hope you're having a wonderful Comic-Con. Yeah. Um, I'm your moderator today, Jessica Chobot, and welcome to the video... Aw, thanks, guys. <laughs> and welcome to the video game culture of zombies. Now, whether you're trying to survive and gleefully humiliate zombies in Capcom's Dead Rising series, or you have your own plan of action for survival based off of Max Brooks' Zombie Survival Guide, one thing is for sure that zombies have buried themselves into our pop culture. See what I did there? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. And are not going any away anytime soon. So... To talk more about that, please welcome our panelists. We have Jeff Cork, Senior Editor Extraordinaire at Game Informer. Yeah. Yeah. Josh Bridge, Executive Producer on Dead Rising 3. Yeah. Alan Jarvie, Art Director on Dead Rising 3. And Max Brooks, well-known author of The Zombie Survival Guide and World War Z, An Oral History of the Zombie War. And then we have Blaine, who will be working the slides. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Blaine! Go, yeah, Blaine! Yeah, go, Blaine! Wow. He's Blaine, really stand good. up. Stand up so they can see you. Doesn't he look like Come a really on, buff Will Wheaton? Whoa. Look at him. Jesus. Yeah. He cosplays as Superman on occasion. <laughs> He's really good with clicking buttons. <laughs> so um, we're going to keep this panel really casual because those are always the most fun. Um, so panelists, feel free to um, jump in on each other's sentences. Oh, we will. I don't know, we will. Fight. Yeah. We will, yes. It's everything's game. And uh, just to, but to just start things off on the right foot and to break the ice, we're gonna, I'm going to ask the one question that everyone has an answer for, which is... What is your zombie apocalypse battle plan? Outrun my children. <laughs> wait, wait, what did you just say? I just said outrun my children. You'll, no. You'll run your children? Outrun. Outrun. Oh, no. you're a horrible father. No, 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 no. Uh, no, I just, I think that um, looking at my life, I've blown it in, as far as the zombie apocalypse goes because I've settled into the suburbs, which the roads <clears> around there are going to be completely clogged immediately. Um, I've got beautiful floor-to-ceiling windows which let light in, and zombies are just going to smash through that. Um, and I also have a family, which I love and adore, but that is, if you watch anything related to zombies, that's a, trend, you know, a huge liability. So, again, uh, families never end well in the zombie apocalypse. So probably my real plan is to go to Super Target, eat all the ice cream, and take it from there. <laughs> nice. Uh, I think I would actually uh, try to get my armored car going. Uh, I want to head to the hills. I want some height in this. On my way there, I will stop by and pick up Jeff's children. <laughs> you got to use them as little chicken McNugget zombie bombs. Yes. Give them extra time. Now that I know his family's safe, I'll then hold up, uh, probably stop by a Costco for sure. Definitely want some of that. And then hold up in the hills, nice and high with my sniper rifle. Hmm. I think I'll uh, stockpile some Campbell's soup. Uh, <laughs> Campbell's soup always does really well. The stock uh, rises hugely in any kind of disaster, so being a Scotsman, I'll probably pick up some of that and see if I can cash in a little bit as well. Nice, nice. And being a Scotsman, you'll have a claymore. Yeah, and I'm going to not swear, because it's under 18 years of age on this. That's right. <laughs> Uh, well, basically, uh, I've been ready for the zombie apocalypse my whole life. I just didn't know it uh, because I grew up in Southern California. So I had a zombie kit. We called it an earthquake kit. Uh, you know, if you live in Southern California, you're pretty much always ready because you, you have to deal with fires, floods, the LAPD beating some poor guy and then getting acquitted in Simi Valley and starting a riot and then leaving. Random story. Thanks, guys. Uh, so basically, I've been ready. Uh, and that's the way, and I also live in Venice, which is gentrifying, nice. but not gentrified. So we always sort of have to be ready for trouble. Uh, and that's uh, pretty much my plan is to keep doing what I'm doing and, and never stop being paranoid and neurotic. But I mean, I'm Jewish, so. <laughs> <laughs> so stay in Venice and write books. Exactly. It's cool. See, I'm just going to roll solo. I just figure it's the easiest way because I can hide, and I'm just going to tie myself to trees up, up in the air at night when I sleep, and then I'm just going to hope that nothing finds me. That's my goal. Sweet. And just then murder a bunch of people. You're not going to live. Um, <laughs> just going to say it. But it would be fun because eventually there will be some zombie survivor nerds being like, oh, my God, dude, 
there's a babe tied in the trees. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. There is a world. god. It's easy bait. <laughs> Um, all right, so let's jump right into it. Jeff, uh, let's have you start off the actual discussion. What's been the evolution of zombies within video games? Oh boy, that's, that's the big question. I guess I'm gonna kind of do something a little different rather than um, do like a big data barf of all the zombie video games. I figure that's you guys... That's a new term, is that technical? Data it's, barf. It's an industry term, data barf. <laughs> figure everyone knows how to use Wikipedia and they can just do that themselves. Instead, what I'm gonna kind of do is, just like movies have a lot of common themes and elements uh, with zombies in, the, in the, the zombie genre, like helicopters and people writing help in red, uh, video games have a lot of gameplay mechanics and elements that have kind of uh, woven through the uh, zombie genre over the years. And a lot of those have roots that extend far back beyond uh, the zombie phenomena. So what I'm gonna do kind of is look at some of those earlier games as examples. They're not necessarily the first time that we saw these things, but I think they're good representations of those elements. So, without further ado, and oh, real quick, just to, uh, just for, for a point of clarification, when I say zombies, I'm talking about reanimated human people, so like Necromorphs in Dead Space, uh, Las Plagas in Resident Evil 4, um, the Clickers in uh, Last of Us. Well, I'll call them zombies, even though they might stay away from the Z word, you know, just to make things simple. So anyway, uh, one of the first things that's kind of a common, if you want to move ahead there, boy. No, we're skip ahead. Yeah, this is uh, one of the common themes is like, killing people is fun when they're zombies. So here's an old arcade game, Death Race 2000, and it was kind of controversial for the time because you see there's little humanoid figures and uh, you could run over them with your car. And they got away with it at the time by saying they were gremlins, they're not people. And it works similarly with uh, humans or with uh, zombies in video games. You could do stuff like run them over with you know, combines and lawnmowers, and you can dismember them, you can put uh, traffic cones on zombie heads, you can do all kinds of things that you wouldn't necessarily get away with if they were just straight up humans. So... What was the one, didn't they just have a video game come out a couple years back that was an a ambulance, and you would run over zombies? Am I'm I, sure am I they, mistaken? Yeah, I'm sure I can't they remember did. the name of it, but That's I one of the things, there's like, there's so many zombie games, like you want to make your computer freeze indefinitely, yeah. go <laughs> okay. to iTunes and do a search for zombie, and show all. Right, and this is something, especially for the for the younger people who are, who are here, like you guys don't understand, like when we grew up in the 80s, there was this big fear that video games were gonna get violent. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I'm happy to say like, that fear never came true. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's interesting, cause like, uh, like first person shooters, they were kind of on the verge of getting like super crazy violent with, remember Soldier of Fortune? Their big thing was like 26 points of destruction on a human body and that kind of, you know, you still have Mortal Kombat and whatnot, but for the most part, all that crazy stuff is in the zombie uh, game genre. Next. Uh, another prevailing theme, people are just the worst and you find that within zombie movies and we're finally at a point in game storytelling where games are able to reflect that. You look at early games like Resident Evil, the big story was primarily about some weird pseudo-scientific explanation of how the zombie plague came into being in the first place. And now developers are more interested in telling the human stories behind there. Um, there and it, it's been a big thing, like Last of Us obviously won a tremendous amount of, amount of uh, accolades for that. Um, Walking Dead games have gotten a lot of uh, credit for a lot of Game of the Year uh, recognition for that. Um, and then also, like, if you want to play something like DayZ, which is an open-ended kind of a sandbox game on PC, you can be the worst person you want to actual people, too. So it's not necessarily just a scripted storyline uh, that reflects that kind of thing. Next. Uh, stealth is another big component. You watch a zombie movie, there's always some jerk who blows it by sneezing or some <laughs> baby that cries, and then all the zombies come. Uh, it's it's kind of like that in games, too. If you play, you know, Last of Us, you always have to be quiet. The, clicker, the clickers are there. There is a big threat. Um, if you play Left 4 Dead with someone who doesn't know what they're doing, and they, you know, bump into a car, and the car alarm goes on, and then huge swarms of zombies come, and the, the day is ruined. Uh, people have been, you know, experimenting with stealth in games for a long time, too. Like, uh, Thief on PC uh, was an early example of that um, in the detection. And it, it's, it, it's another thing that I think is a really interesting mechanic that kind of reflects things that we see in movies. Uh, next slide. All right, this, is, this takes me back. I have a soft spot for this game. This is uh, the original Castle Wolfenstein before uh, it brought it into 3D. And it was one of the first games that I remember that had, <clears throat> excuse me, limit, uh, limited ammunition. Up until then, I remember you could basically get away with shooting as many bullets as long as you could push the button. This one, you had to kind of uh, recover ammunition, which is another theme, you know, limited supplies in the zombie game. And it talked, remember? 
Remember what the Nazis would say? Yeah, exactly. Achtung, halt. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Out of that tiny little speaker. And you're like, I, I can't speak German and I can't understand what, what this is, but it's speech. Sure. Um, yeah, so, you know, limited ammunition is always a big thing. Uh, Resident Evil kind of, you know, Rightfully so, gets a lot of credit for being one of the uh, innovators in survival horror. And that's something that we kind of directly uh, associate with zombies, but that's kind of branched out as a genre to include other kinds of monsters. Next slide. And kind of along the same lines with weapons, you have improvised weapons. Uh, you don't have a lot of time in a zombie apocalypse to prepare. Maybe uh, Max has, but the rest of us has. So <laughs> you have to make do. You know, here's a shot from Dead Island. You got to spike bat, someone's driven a bunch of nails into a baseball bat and they're using it. You see that in a lot of games, uh, people using golf clubs. You remember Zombies Ate My Neighbors on the uh, Super Nintendo throwing like soda cans and you know, <laughs> using a weed whackers against the zombies. Uh, yeah, so there's that. Next one, um, fortification. Another thing, this is Rampart, an old arcade game that I really liked. Uh, you had two phases, you'd build your base and then uh, the ship units would kind of destroy it. And that's kind of a thing that I, I really enjoy about zombie games is kind of a, the feeling that uh, zombies are coming, you don't have much time to, to, to prepare your defenses. So like you play Minecraft and you're not building you know, Starship Enterprise, you're actually playing the, the survival mode. You know, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, and the next one. Uh, Robotron 2084 has two mechanics that I really like. The first of which is that you've got uh, units that are instantly identifiable. You've got different types like the hulks, which are the big uh, beefy dudes. They're indestructible. You've got the brains, which I don't believe are in this screenshot. They can kind of uh, convert other guys. But in zombie games, you know, you typically have different types of zombies. You've got the fat ones that explode. You've got the ones that will shoot or rather spit stuff at you. You've got ones that run at you. You've got aggro ones, just all kinds of crazy, um, crazy variations. And that's something that's very much associated with zombie games is just having different unit types you can like instantly go, okay, this is what I'm up against. Uh, this is how I have to react. And also Robotron uh, had uh, like swarms of enemies, which is something that until relatively recently we haven't seen in video games. You remember like uh, when games made the transition to 3D, Resident Evil only had a couple of zombies on screen at a time. And that was good enough, but it wasn't until you got to something like, next slide, this, this is completely self-serving, but you get to like Dead Rising, which was, uh, I remember being completely blown away at the time, because here I was for the first time in a like 3D environment with hordes of zombies. Like the closest I'd been able to get to that as a player was putting in a bunch of codes in GTA 3 and making all the pedestrians super pissed off, which, you know, worked <laughs> in a pinch, but it just wasn't nearly as much fun. In a pinch. In a and pinch. zombies in a mall, wow. <laughs> hmm, yeah. moving right along. Yeah. Ta -da. Yeah. Basically, um, I, th I think that where I see zombie games going is probably more open-ended MMO style things. Like ultimately, I like the idea of being able to, you talk to somebody, what's your survival plan? Everyone has an answer to that. And I think it'd be great to actually be able to play that. You know what I mean? Like actually align with other people, create your own factions, like hold up in, the, in a prison. And if you want to decide to research for a cure, great. If you want to just uh, kill everyone who kind of walks along the road near you, even better maybe, I don't know. Everyone does their own thing. And also at Comic-Con, I think I played a bunch of Street Pass just because everyone has a 3DS here. Nintendo is insane if they don't do something with like a zombie outbreak in Street Pass because that would be like the most fantastic idea ever. But they probably wouldn't unless they made it like super cute. But whatevs. <laughs> All right, so uh, Josh, Alan, let's move on to you guys. Um, with the culture of zombies constantly evolving and changing, what is Dead Rising 3 doing in order to kind of push the envelope? Sure. Well, first up, uh, we did this next generation slide right here. Uh, we put in uh, really detailed blood dripping physics technology. Oh, oh. took Yeah, it away. thanks, Blaine. Yeah, thanks, Blaine. Okay. Um, you know, something we want to do is, you know, we've always been massive fans of just the zombie genre and zombie movies and books and what we want to do with Dead Rising 3 was kind of evolve the series and also tie in a lot of these sort of tenants that are part of the culture of zombies. Um, let's kind of slide me. Slide me. <laughs> slide me. Um, first up, this is a shot out of the game. Um, one of the big things that we want to do was give you this big open world with more zombies than ever before, even further than what we've uh, seen in the past. And we want to give you that freedom to sort of like, you know, play how you want, so essentially survive in your own way. Slide me. <laughs> you can see like we've really opened up uh, the world and the vistas and, and all these stores and all these things are actually enterable. 
right? Because we want to actually add that layer of authenticity so that you're empowered to sort of make that choice of well, what do I want to do? Where should I go? It's up to you. So we're not trying to limit you. We actually want to open this up for you to survive. Next slide. And then scavenging is a really big part of the game. You know, like uh, supplies being at a premium, trying to find the right weapon, trying to find food. Uh, you'll find a lot of these places have been ransacked. So we want to make sure we kind of got that tension in there as well. So it was a bit more authentic. Slide. And then, uh, as you can see with all the zombies, like this is the kind of thing that you're going to face a lot in the game. Uh, these guys are the enemy this time. Uh, you're going to be surrounded by these guys. You're always going to be on the move. You're always going to be looking for higher ground. Uh, you're always going to be kind of pushed to kind of like stay alive. Slide. And then uh, the human element actually is a big part of the game for us as well. Uh, you know, they, we have this sort of like uh, background in our uh, game where the government's sort of chipping people who are infected as a way to sort of like, you know, keep track of them. Essentially, it sort of ends up being a bit more nefarious. And then it kind of ties into uh, smart class, actually. What we did is we uh, came up with a fiction uh, that in this world where zombies have sort of been, or the infection has been going on for years, we've essentially established a government you know, zombie agency, the ZDC, the Zombie Defense and Control Unit. And what we did is we actually extended this sort of like to your device, to your phone or to your tablet. And we want to actually break the fourth wall this time. And if any fans of Dead Rising, uh, if you remember Otis, anyone? Yes. 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 I hate Otis. <laughs> <laughs> but we gave you Otis in your hand, essentially, that you know, there's an actual character who is an Otis, that, that actually you're going to get calls on your phone as you're playing the game. And you, That's awesome. And you're going to hear his voice coming out of there, kind of telling you, like, you know, new, new things to discover, or he's found a location of some survivors. And it kind of, it's like essentially the game's now in your hand. And it, you know, I kind of geek out on that. I love the idea of just sort of like having the game sort of like speak to me more as opposed to just being a single screen. And I'm, I multitask all the time. I always have something else going, so it was awesome to have this. And we find even from a gameplay experience that uh, this, this is like a multi sort of game now. I can pass it off to Alan, and then he's like, as he's helping me out, there's other things you can do. You can kind of like, you know, look for our supplies and sort of radar supplies for you. Or we showed earlier uh, uh, at E3, which you can come by to the game lounge, I'll show you. We basically, you can press a button and things go boom. Which is really cool. Airstrike. Airstrikes. Are kind those, of hijacking those, some military support. Are those calls going to eat up my minutes? Uh, no. <laughs> but, but you can change the ringtones and wallpaper. That's awesome. That would be funny. I would do it. <laughs> But, you know, for me, that's one of the reasons that, that I signed on for this, uh, to be here with these guys, is because, you know, I was a super gamer my whole life, and for me, I was so into it, I always wanted my games to be even more real than they were. I told these guys, when I met them, when I was a kid, I used to play a, a sub-game called Silent Service 1 on my, uh, my Apple II GS. And for me, it wasn't enough just to play the sub-game. Like, literally, when the sub would get hit, I would turn off the lights in my room and turn on the shower to make it seem like the sub was flooding. <laughs> Because I really wanted to live in that world. I mean, that's why we're all here, right? We want to bring things out of the medium and bring it out into the world that we live in. And that's what this does. This is a real game changer for a game, so to speak, is that it actually makes a whole new level of reality in a way that no other game has ever had. And I think that, that is, that's going to change everything. That's what makes this so brilliant. Woo! Thanks, man. Thanks, Max. <laughs> Slide me. <laughs> Uh, and then everything and anything is a weapon, so just grabbing anything is still part of this, and, and you'll find yourself not always just armed with guns and whatnot, right, because if ammo's at a premium, it's, it's an outbreak. So you're going to find yourself confronted with just kind of like grabbing whatever you can find nearby. You may not look the coolest all the time, because you're just desperate survival, in this case, just through trying to pick up a chair. We just took some screenshots real quick before we came down. thought we'd show that. Next. Thank you. Uh, a lot of survival also is about trying to, like, stay alive and we use light and we use sound now uh, that affects these zombies and kind of gets them more aggravated and sort of more aware of you. So we try to add another layer of depth there so they're not just a toy, they are an enemy. And then driving, we love driving. We touched on it a bit in Dead Rising 2, but now that we're fully open world and streaming, uh, we embraced it as part of this experience of just trying to be, find vehicles that work still. And as you're just trying to drive, you know, whether it's trying to get to a, a safe house that we actually extended that sort of desperation of survival, even to vehicles where they can hang off the car and actually try to pull you out of it. They're a lot more aggressive. And then super geek out, it affects the physics of the driving too. It's really cool. <laughs> no, but that's actually, that's a really important thing to do. And I think that's, we've seen that in the evolution of video games for a while. Like, um, 
there was, uh, for me, uh, there was a game called uh, Red Orchestra. I don't know if you ever played it. It's a World War II game. And it was the first game I ever played where the physics of the guns were actually real. So you couldn't just pull down a trigger and rock and roll. If you were, if you were going full auto, the gun would shoot up in the air as a real gun would do. And I think incorporating real physics gives it a whole other level of believability, which is what you need to do, I think, now with video games. Yeah. People are smart, and they know that a car would never do this or that. Absolutely. Yeah, they actually, the weight of the vehicle uh, is affected actually by the weight of the zombies, so the more they're hanging off one side, it actually affects your ability to even steer, and even hitting their bodies actually deflects your driving. It's super cool. <laughs> Slide me. Uh, and like I was talking about with the increased awareness, you know, we're, we basically are really trying to give that feeling of a different way of playing, so you're not just always having to deal with combat or you know, face to face with all these zombies. You can trick them and distract them. You, know, you can figure out a way to maybe not make a sound and avoid uh, the whole cir circumstance, or you can actually evoke a way to sort of affect a lure, we call it. In this case, we just threw a flare out, and that kind of gets our attention. They are kind of dumb, so they will actually choose it over you. Yeah. And what was cool about that was that was a, a direct shout out to the godfather of zombies, George Romero, who in Land of the Dead had fireworks shooting out of um, his tank. So these guys are very much aware of Romero. They're all huge fans. <laughs> yes, very uh, much so. So this, is, this was definitely an homage to the godfather. Yes, absolutely. Uh, archetypes. You know, we don't go fantasy. We kind of keep it real, you know, real zombies. But um, we kind of look at it as like, you know, <laughs> that you know, if you're gonna deal with a zombie and it's a zombified fireman, you know, they might be a bit tougher to take down. They are resistant to fire, maybe. Uh, and actually, you kind of end up with these tougher circumstances, like a football player that turns zombies pretty, pretty tough. They're kind of still trying to do what they were last doing, you know, whether it's swinging his ax or trying to, trying to tackle you. So we actually add some more depth to the archetype side of the zombies, but keep it real. <laughs> um, Followed up by Sorry this Sorry about the age rating. <laughs> Sorry, kids. No, that's all right. That's all right. This, this is fine. There's no boobies anywhere in the game. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's, that's, that's totally okay for children. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so a lot of violence is a big part of this, and we find that uh, zombies are the excuse to sort of have that outlet and sort of just go crazy and get, do those things that might make you cringe. But it's okay. They're zombies. Yeah, sure. But it, and for us, it also ties into the horror genre of just there is a payoff of the cringe of gore, right? So we put a lot more effort into uh, goring. Let's uh, see what else we got for goring. Uh, and f you know, setting them on fire, making some uh, makeshift weapons, like a homebrew flamethrower. Next slide. And then the freedom to explore and do whatever you want. You know, like, because you can kind of go in this world and, you know, what would you do if it was the end of the world today? Is there, you know, Obviously, you'd want to, some people might want to ignore saving their family. <laughs> or run ahead of them. You gotta or know your limitations. Straight, yeah, straight out of run them. You know, obviously, you want to stay alive at some point. Maybe you just want to get a lark out, too. You're just like, I'm going to actually bust in there. I'm going to drive that awesome car. And we want to make sure that all those options are there for you to choose. And that's, that kind of speaks to the, the tone of the game as well. If we came out with a game that looked, that had a veneer that was very um, goofy, then it doesn't have the same impact on the gamer if, if, as if we actually have a more serious look because you can explore the game and you can play the game your way and that has to be in a realistic setting. Next slide. Actually, before we move on to the next slide, oh, yeah. can I, move on can to I the jump in slide. really quick and okay, can we go back? Because Blaine and I were actually talking about this before we started. Yeah. And he was mentioning that all those little shards of glass and everything, those are all physics-based. Yes, and yeah. Can you give us a little bit more information on that? Because I thought that was really cool. We, 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 when we started out on this, we were thinking, like, some of the context you find in zombie movies with, like, zombies are trying to, like, you know, get into an area that you're kind of locked down in. Like, as Jeff mentioned, windows. <laughs> the concern around windows is valid. And what we did is we developed glass in a way that actually uh, cracks in different mounts and then actually shatters. And when it shatters, those pieces are actually physics-based shattered objects of glass. And there's the velocity of the impulse. So essentially, a car driving out will just blow these shards forward with you. Lightly punch it, and it'll just kind of like crumble. It's like a crazy amount of detail that we're able to put into the game now. And it really pays off. It really feels good to drive through a store and just smash through everything and all the glass. Yeah, doors around. don't get used. Any more in our game? Yeah, like <laughs> as we started putting glass, everyone were like, "Screw the door!" It's like, pss, yeah. off through the window. We just golden axe right through there. Yeah. Now, if you do punch the glass, could it injure you? No. S okay. <laughs> what? Don't be silly. <laughs> That's not real. 
<laughs> no, but, but that, that definitely speaks to something else. You know, I've written a lot about zombie survival, and I tend to stick very realistically. And I just want to say, like, for the young people in the audience, this is a game. Please do not try this in a real zombie apocalypse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. don't, don't pull out that lightsaber. Do not drive through windows. It's just... Electric sword. Yeah, just be careful. <laughs> so you can see that... Whilst the, whilst the game has a serious veneer, you can spam up the image in any way you want. So you can, you can take uh, combo weapons, put stuff together that just looks ridiculous, wear a ridiculous outfit, and that is user, user choice. So it's, it's so much more powerful if you are uh, enabled to make the game as goofy as you would like to make it, rather than us forcing a sense of humor upon you. So that's, that's the, one of the early decisions that we made with the game is to look this way. And then uh, I just want to note the detailed goring here. Uh, that is actually location-based damage that's actually severing away bones and flesh and actually showing all the detail. Brain matter. Super cool. <laughs> and that's a laser sword, by the way. Any yes. fans of Dead Rising? Yes, it's a combo weapon. Saber. It's pretty cool. No. No. Slide. <laughs> uh, and we're, we actually wanted to show you a few more of these sort of different takes. Um, Al and I just worked on these yesterday just to take a few shots with us. You know, we sort of see this tenant as sort of like the, there is a side of letting loose of your inhibitions and just kind of like what would you do what would this be like if i played the part of a wrestler and i'm going to try that out or or the knight and that's where we sort of cater to and you can play the game straight as well right if you just want to get down and dirty about survival using you know base weapons and just how you can gather supplies and stay alive that's there for you as well well hope, we hope to appeal to a lot more fans and, and garner more fans for the game and um, because if we if if we kind of just pushed it in one direction and we forced comedy upon upon the end user, then it's, it's, it's kind of limiting us. It's limiting um, people who are fans of the franchise to share that experience with other people. So we hope, to, hope uh, that you really like the game, the way it looks. Next slide, please. Yeah. <laughs> I've been nervous. Yeah. Once More again, not forcing a sense of humor on anyone. Not at all. <laughs> We're keeping it subtle here. That's your choice. That's your choice. Next up. Wear the bull, don't wear the bull. Yeah. <laughs> Serve yes. off. Uh, humiliation is a big part of it for us as well. It's just kind of fun to mess around and hat the zombs and uh, dress how you want. <laughs> cool, that's, uh, that's a little bit of a dead rising. Yeah. Okay, so moving on, Max, let's go to you. Now, the synergy between these multiple mediums, uh, a great example would be the phone now that we've experienced, as well as movies and books and everything across the genre. Uh, they seem to feed off of, no pun intended, feed off of one another and move the zombies genre forward. So what do you think is the next big thing for zombies? If I, if I could gauge what the public was hungry for, if I had that kind of power, trust me, I wouldn't be wasting time here. I'd be working on Wall Street. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. All I know is what I like. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'm pretty much, I know that for me, what's fascinating, one of the fascinating things about zombies is uh, it seems to be limitless because they are so big in nature and there's just, there's so much you can do with it. And one of the things I loved about this game was also the multiplayer aspect that you can call your friends up and you can both play together on different sides of town and have a meeting place, which I thought would be awesome because, you know, I flash back to like, if I were 15, I would totally do that. I would totally call my friends and be like, oh my God, all right, I'll meet you at this place, and you, you can have the same maps, right? So you can actually yep. put a map on there yeah. on your smartphones, mm -hmm. which I think is genius. So that's the kind of stuff that I wanted to do like when I was a kid. You know, I sort of feel like z games in general have caught up to what we all wanted to do when we were kids, but the technology just wasn't there. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and as far as, you know, zombies in popular culture, people have been saying it's been over for, I don't know, every year since it's since the renaissance began in 2003. So I think it's just gonna keep going and going until we all get sick of it. So who knows when that'll happen. Never. Yeah, <laughs> I won't. Um, what about you guys? I mean, did you, do you, I'm, you're perfect people to ask as well. Do you think that the thing, uh, <laughs> <laughs> where do you see, uh, where do you see uh, zombies going forward? Um, I think, I think we're just still trying to figure ourselves out in the gameplay, game side of zombie games, like all the history that we've sort of had in all the games over the years and what we're doing now with Dead Rising and where I can see other games going. I think we have a lot more growth potential of where this experience can ultimately go for what that zen genre mm -hmm. is. And what I really like is that film and books and games bounce back and ping pong and uh, feed off each other for ideas and how that moves it forward. I mean, first time seeing, you know, uh, 28 Days Later, 
and it just like holy smokes it actually added a whole new dynamic yeah. to it and, and i think also the, the the level of realism i think is really important as the technology increases you're able to get a deeper sense of realism and i think that's what a lot of people want some people want to play zombie video games and have uh, it, just to have it be as crazy and wacky and exciting as they want, but I think there's also a whole other community that want it to be as realistic as possible. Because they really do think about this stuff, and they really do think like, well, you could die of infection, or these guns are louder, and if I pull the trigger on this, I will attract zombies. Yeah, the game gives you the what-if scenario. Yeah, and, and I think, I think that zombies, out. that's the reason I think zombies are so popular, is that they are the ultimate what-if, is that there are so many doors that are open to you. You can go as realistic as you want, you can go as fanciful as you want. Realistic, we just bath salts. <laughs> I mean, bath salts. Bath salts. <laughs> just throwing that one out there. Just right there. All right, we're going to um, go ahead and move on to what you've all been waiting for the QA. So if you've got a question, line up by that microphone right there. And also, apparently, this panel needs more cowbell. Oh, <laughs> yeah, cowbell. We're getting just, the fever. Just found it up here, just chilling. <laughs> Should we just keep going? All right, yeah. go ahead. Okay, uh, my name is Nathan. Uh, thanks for being here today. Uh, I am curious about uh, what you all are most excited about in terms of uh, what next gen allows you to do in the zombie universe. Um, you said that so creepily. So creepily. I love the <laughs> eyebrow moves. Like, 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 curious, <laughs> like you want me to tell you something really bad. Um, I think, uh, you know, outside of the fidelity, which is actually a big part of just the immersion and the believability side of it, I think where I see the excitement looking forward is just the, uh, the game being perpetual. Uh, you know, the, uh, you know, cloud-based sort of compute where the game can just keep running and it's like a, a, an actual world. And then things like smart glass where you can kind of get messages on the fly when you're heading to work. It's like, oh my God, I'm getting overrun. What do I do? And then you can actually have a bit of gameplay on that sort of device as the game is actually alive in your absence. I think it's just more about that what if scenario can actually extend beyond just one moment. It can just be a perpetual universe. I think for me it's like typically you would see the kind of fidelity that we have in our game in a, in a, a linear game and being able to add that fidelity in an open world game is, is something that's uh, been really awesome for the team to be able to do. So it's, you know, it's really nice to have all that extra horsepower. Yeah, no, I agree, and I, I think I think the ability for creative expression is uh, is becoming more and more important. I remember when I first played uh, Civ Two by Sid Meier, what everybody was raving about was uh, that you could mod it any way you wanted. And I think that, that really opened the door for a lot of people because I think uh, all of us have a, a creative side in us and we all want to express it. And a lot of us feel very sort of hemmed in by the rules of certain games. Yeah. So you got to get from here to here to here and you can't go back. And I think a lot of gamers love to create their own worlds. Yeah. And I think that yeah. the more we're able to do that, the more popular it's going to get. Yeah, that's a toy box, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's a toy box for the player to play. And I, I love that about open world games. It really, it really brings that to the user. You can be a kid, you can make your own stories up right. in it. Yeah. And, right. and I mean, like, like we're the generation, like when we played Legos, we just got blocks. Like we didn't have to build an X-Wing, you know? We could build anything we wanted. Yeah. And I thought that, that that's a great thing to do in video games, is just keep expanding the personal freedom. Oh, um, I was wondering, since zomb being a zombie is like a disease kind of thing, where it's not like your dead body just instantly becomes a zombie. It's like a disease has to go into your dead body for it to become a disease. I was thinking, why hasn't it been so that a disease could evolve? Like, for example, every single time the humans beat the zombies over and over and over again, why haven't the zombies been like, oh, they're beating us, maybe we should use ranged weapons, or maybe we should have armor? Like, why haven't they thought that? They're just coming at us the same dumb way every single time. They actually have. There's, there's a movie by a man you probably have never heard of. His name is George Romero. Uh, he, he created... I mean, that's all right. You're, you're, you're a young man, and, and you always assume that oil's going to be $100 a barrel. Um, but there was a guy named George Romero, and he created the modern zombie. And in his movie, zombies actually do evolve. There's a movie called Land of the Dead, where zombies get smarter and smarter, and they learn how to use weapons. So by the end, they actually organize themselves into an army. So he's, he's actually thought that out. Like, that old horse is still kicking. So like, could you do that like in a game? In a game? Yeah. Oh, I assume so. <laughs> Just for yeah, you. Yeah, you guys, why not? Hi. Come on, nice. Come on you guys. Soon. <laughs> 
I'm Alex, and hey, Alex. you mentioned earlier something about the multiplayer where you'd call yeah. your friend and be like, hey, let's meet up in town. I wanted to know, uh, I didn't quite understand, would the multiplayer be like online or would you have a split screen feature where you can sit with your buddy and be like, you know, we're going to go to the oh, Kmart or whatnot? Uh, it's online, co-op, hop in, hop out, big world, you don't have to be stuck together, you can uh, split up as well. But is there a split screen or? Uh, no, no. No we split want, screen? No, we want to push the fidelity as far as we could. Also, while you're talking, oh, sorry. <laughs> what? Alex, when this is over, come talk to us. Yeah, man. Uh, I was wondering what's your best zombie moment in a video game you guys had? <clears throat> this is for all of you on the, up there. Any game? Yeah, any game. All right. I'm sorry, I, I didn't... What, what, yeah. What's your best zombie moment in any video game you played? I've got, I think I've got a pretty good one, but it's not about me. It's about you guys, so go ahead. <laughs> you can answer this, too. Uh, he's looking at you. He ain't looking at us. He's looking at you right now. <laughs> this is for everyone. Like What's wrong next. with you? Um, oh, okay. Well, so when, uh, when uh, Left 4 Dead first came out, I, it was probably the one game that I played the most multiplayer with, co-op multiplayer with my friends. And I know this isn't the way to do it, but I went um, wireless because I couldn't move my Xbox close enough to where my jack was to fix everything up. So I was running off of a wireless. And we were getting to, I can't remember what stage it was, it's the one that has, you're in the house, and then two tanks come at you, and then you gotta run down that um, bridge to get to the safe house. And we literally had only two people left, myself and a friend of mine, and we n no health left, and we're just hanging on by a thread. And it was the first time we played that level, so we killed the first tank, and we're like, oh god, yeah, okay, whew. We're out of here, and then all of a sudden you heard boom, 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 boom. And we're like, no! And my friend goes, just go, just go! I'm gonna sacrifice myself, just go! And I'm like, okay, thanks, bye! And I like hop out a window, and I start running, and I can hear him die, and I hear him go, no! And I'm like, oh God! And I'm like trying, like, pushing the toggle harder because that's going to make me run faster. But I'm like, oh, God. And I can hear it coming up behind me. And I'm like, oh, no, no. And I can see the safe house. And as I reach for it, the wireless goes out. And I lose the game. And I just threw my controller. And I was like, it. Darn it. <laughs> Please be aware that members of your audience may be under 18 years of age. <laughs> And I was very upset, and then I called uh, my friend, and I was like, you're not going to believe what happened to me, blah, 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 blah. So that's my story. So we died for nothing. Story full of disappointment That was and an awesome <laughs> answer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, you were talking about the evolution of uh, uh, zombie gaming, and I think one of the big things for that was um, persistent damage in games. And I'm wondering, with this, you know, the new platform, are you going to be able to have uh, persistent damage in an open world? So it's sort of, you know, th those those changes live on throughout the life of the game. Yeah, we uh, we developed the game with persistence in mind. Um, we actually pushed for that because we wanted to make sure there was a believability. So when you went and did something, it, it perpetuated um, through the gameplay tuning. We've been finding some things perpetuate to the point that it's probably bad, and your game has to be restarted. <laughs> that you cause so many problems that it's just a sack pile of cars, and it's all over. But yeah, we, we definitely uh, involve that in the whole game experience. All right, thanks. Oh yeah, no, if I had my way in games, I would make it so real that it would literally be like, uh, your herpes are flaring up. <laughs> real for who, You Max? must find some Zovarax. Do you know that you can actually buy herpes on the show floor here at the really? show? The little stuffed microbes. They're selling, oh. they're selling chlamydia because everybody's got it. And uh, oh, herpes sweet. and a couple other things. Oh. I mean, except for me, I obviously know. American values. American values. <laughs> Just throwing that one out there in case anybody wants to go pick one up. <laughs> okay, so reasonably the E3 trailer got a lot of people concerned about the new Dead Rising. It's a new team, it's all brown and blue. People are thinking it's super dark and serious. Glad to be proven wrong today that you still get to keep the comedy alive, you yeah. know, for that. It's such a big appeal. But I'm still concerned about the smart glass that was shown in the ED, E3 trailer, where you just pull out your smartphone and then, you know, you say, oh, I want airstrike, and then all the zombies are dead. Yeah. And so can you go into more detail about... What's uh, your concern about it? I'm concerned that it's overpowered. I'm concerned that people oh, who don't have yeah. smart glass uh, are will be missing out on a large part of it. Mm. I'm worried that's going to be an intriguing part. I, that's fair. I'm, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, imagine if you could press that button and blow stuff up. We'd be, like, running credits after a half an hour. 
Yeah. <laughs> Which actually be kind of funny, actually, to yeah. try that. That'd be awesome. So could you go into more detail about the smart glass yeah. and how it works? Yeah, so you don't, you're not missing out on, I mean, the game is big. There's an incredible amount of content and stuff to do without the smart glass device enabled. It's free. It's a free app. Everyone has a phone, so you could just turn it on and just hook in if you want. Um, for the uh, apps and the overpowered, I mean, there's, we balance that because how it works is there's a gameplay economy, like of essentially finding codes, and those codes can be spent on different things like unlocking areas of the world or finding weapon caches or spending them on things like hijacking military uh, support. Some things like an airstrike. There's so, also, but uh, can we can we call in the airstrike without having smart glass? Uh, no, no, you need the device hooked up. No, there's also a special add-on where a Senate subjudiciary committee prevents the Obama administration from carrying on drone strikes without a special recommendation from Congress. So I hope that answers your question. Yeah. <laughs> All right. This is for Max. Um, having done novels, kind of a graphic novel, and now a comic book with Extinction Parade, which if you guys haven't read it, you should. Thank you. Um, do you have a preference of medium, you know, which you, what you like doing better? No, I think it depends on the story. I think whatever sort of, however, when I think of a story, I think of it in a certain medium. So it's like when I wrote, when I thought of World War Z, I thought of it like, no, it's got to be an oral history and therefore it's got to be a, it's got to be a book first. Uh, Extinction Parade, I thought of the pictures, first I actually wrote a short story and then I thought, no, it's, it's visual. I mean, I like comics because it's a great way to do something visual without having to go through a studio and make a movie. Uh, but no, like it, it, it all depends. Uh, you know, maybe someday I'd get into video games, although, like I said, mine might be a little bit too realistic. Like, you must purify this water. <laughs> it will take three hours. <laughs> three real hours. Three real hours in real time. And you gotta sit and, and watch it. And you gotta it. sit and do this manually yeah. for three hours. Yes. Like, that would be my game. Or you could live your real life. Yeah, that's pretty much <laughs> what it would be. That's awesome. Hi. Um, my question is, uh, what other multiplayer capabilities will there be? Like, will, um, you, will we finally have four-player co-op, or will we just have another clone of Chuck? Um, what was the last part, sorry? Um, will we have, like, four-player co-op, finally, or, like, will we have another clone of Chuck? It's two now, right? It's Maximum. two, yeah. We developed it for two. The technology and everything we're pushing in there, it targets at two. But with this time, we actually built it so that you're not just like a, uh, a buddy that's a nameless. You're your own character. And you can actually hop in and out of each other's games, and you save the story progress offline as well. Mm -hmm. So it actually makes it a lot more inclusive, which is cool. Okay. How you doing? I'm Joe. Um, Hi, Joe. I had a question about the physics aspect of the game. <clears throat> Like, when you burst through that glass wall with a car, do the shards of glass actually, like, damage, or do they just, like, fall to the ground? Does it, like, actually do damage when you drop something from a building and hits a zombie on the head, or is it just, like, so visual? So we, we were tuning that, actually, because they're physics-based objects. They collide mm -hmm. with everything. They actually drape around the vehicle, as well as window okay, sills, nice. and everything is actually real and bouncing around, so it's not just, like, <laughs> fake particles. Whoop. Yeah. Um, but in tuning it, yeah, I mean, it can add a bit of damage to it. We just didn't find tuning-wise it was a lot of fun when that was okay. happening. So that, that's awesome. the, the video game out. Yeah, and, and if you drop a sledgehammer from a roof onto a zombie, you know what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, thank you. Hi, everybody. My name is Vincent. Um, quick question for Max. If you give a shout-out to my nephew, Alex, he couldn't make it today. Um, <laughs> okay, here's what we'll do. Wait, hold oh, on. Sorry. On the count of three, everyone's going to say hi, Alex. Okay. All right, ready? One, two, three. Hi, Hi Alex. Alex! Thank you so much. Um, now for my question. Um, the whole thing about real, realism in zombie games sounds really awesome. One thing I like in your book, Max, is the whole um, countdown of what happens when you get bitten, like hour one, you start getting the fever and all that. Would we be seeing that in the future of video games? Maybe. I mean, I, I think it has to be optional because I think, I mean, you got to remember, for all of us that want things to be super realistic, there's like 100,000 people that just want to have a good time. You know, like, I love slow zombies. That's just how I roll. But I know I'm in the minority here. And clearly, well, anyway. So I, I think, I think it's okay to get more realistic, but I think then you have to have the option to give people who are not into that a chance to just have an easy time. Right on. Great. Thanks so much, guys. Uh, I have a question for the release of what system it's going on. Is it just going on Xbox One or Xbox One and 360? It's Xbox exclusive. 
Uh, uh, Xbox One exclusive. Okay, thank you. Oh, this one? Uh, I have a question for the pretty one. No. <laughs> yes. Hi. Yeah, what would you like to know? Okay. Yeah, what is that? Actually, before Hi. you ask that, I hate to do this, but unfortunately, due to time, you're going to be our last uh. question. Guys, I'm sorry. Oh, dude, you got to make but this good. Just, make it good. Yeah. All right. So the pressure's on you. All right. <laughs> Better be All right. Good. Um, have, you, have you guys ever thought about, like, full-on face customization or just, I mean, just plain, uh, like, put on the suit and all that or just because... A lot of people find it really, like, in Skyrim or any other kind of, like, full-on customization game, find it badass, like, ah, oh, yeah, that's me. <laughs> or something like that, you know? It's something that we can look towards in the future. I think right now we want to tell Nick Ramos' story yeah. and keep it to Nick. Uh, it's something we've batted around a lot. On Capcom's end, we've always wanted to create strong, iconic characters that are memorable in the whole, you know, sort of universe of Capcom. So that was the decision around that. No, I hear you, dude. Look, I've always wanted a character that looks like me. Because yeah. to my knowledge, it's me and John Cryer. We're the only two people who look like this. <laughs> so I'd love to have a character that looks like me. <laughs> All right, thank you very much, guys, everybody, for your questions. I mean, if we don't, don't go yet. We still got more stuff. I mean, you can sit down, but, <laughs> but don't leave the room. Um, I actually have one final question for the panel. Anybody can answer that, feel free. Uh, why hasn't the zombie genre died out, do you think? I mean, why is it that zombies are still going strong where maybe other monsters, sparkly ones, are kind of, you know, not sparkly as ones. awesome? Well, the, I think it's because the, the impetus for the, for the zombies is still around. I mean, mm -hmm. you said, why have sparklers died out? It's because by this point, most of the, the people who read those books initially have by now lost their virginity. <laughs> <laughs> so it no longer has you that... You are now my new favorite person yeah, for that yeah. statement. <laughs> I think it's because the reason zombies got popular in the first place is we're living in pretty scary times. I mean, you, for the last, what, 10, 11 years, you turn on CNN, it's like, come on, God. It's just, we're getting slammed with one big problem after another, and people need a place to explore those apocalyptic fantasies. And what makes zombies cool is that you can see all the things you would have seen in a real disaster, because at zombies, you're like, oh, that would never happen. I'm going to go to sleep. So I think as long as we are still living in anxiety-ridden times, people are going to need a place to channel those apocalyptic fantasies. Yeah. I, guess, I, guess you, I guess you did it. Yeah. I guess that's yeah. the answer. That's, that's, Jeff, that's did you? No, okay. you cut me cool. off. Um, and I think we do have one final little treat, yeah. correct? Yeah, we, um, we just put together um, a little uh, Vidoc about sort of Dead Rising and uh, some of the stuff that we like about it. So I hope you enjoy. First time showing this. Lights. Yeah. This is so, just for you guys. And, just and for guys, you guys. Lights. Guys, just as a heads up on the way out, feel free to grab your SDCC exclusive poster from DC artist Jeremy Rappick. Dead Rising was a kitchen utensil, I think it would be a cheese grater. A blender. Pork screw. Dead Rising 3 is a poor sandbox filled with zombies, filled with weapons. You versus a horde of enemies. On Xbox One, we've been able to create a huge world that's larger than both of our previous games combined multiple times over. There's always a landmark building, there's always a very recognizable skyline. Fully streaming. No load times, no waiting. A true open world game. Our new generation of zombies are smarter and way more deadly. Oh my god. It's like it knows. Something about when it was alive. There's cop zombies, prisoner zombies. We got football player zombies from the local high school. Just gonna take you right to the ground. Every zombie is a snowflake. A couple things that we did with Connect that actually really tie into the core gameplay experiences. One is with audio. Oh, turn it off, turn it off. You can actually I'll just distract them by just yelling out in the room, which is actually pretty funny. Looking for a snack? You know, we have so much more horsepower here. Let's actually invest in how they can see and hear and actually use some of this really cool real-time lighting as some of the things that they can see as well. You can use flares, you can use headlights, you can set traps in the environment. Dead Rising 3 is all about improvisational gameplay. 
do what you want and play how you want. Or you can put on a banana hammock and decapitate zombies online with your buddy if you want. You know, get attacked by a zombie and you know, if you just look at it for a moment, you're actually seeing like teeth and tongue and little fingernails. You slice them up, cut them up, chop their arms off, chop their heads off. It makes you think twice before you kill it. Or perhaps it doesn't. Come on. Big world filled with zombies. You gotta run around and scavenge, find supplies, fight back. Dude, I need a gun, dude, I need explosive. There's too many zombies. Anything and everything is a weapon. You don't have to stop for anything. You can pick everything up on the run. You can combine weapons, create new combinations. When you grab this sledge saw and you kind of line up to a zombie and just start slicing, you're putting them down the center. It's like, see the ribs going, Whoa! It just starts splitting apart. It's amazing. Thank you very much for joining us. Have a wonderful rest of the con, and thank you to our panelists. Woo!